Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 42 of Huel's Gold. I'm Alan. I'm Chris. And away we go. Where are we going? We're going to California Companies. Oh. <laughs> yep. Pretty pretty straightforward title. Not the most exciting of titles the last couple episodes. No. Not, no, not really but... grabbing people as far as just straight up net notoriety in the title. I mean, he could have called it Studebaker and Levi's. Would have been a lot more interesting, I yeah, think. Yeah, I think so. Well, well, I don't want to... just said two California companies, too. Yeah. It makes it sound like there's going to be more than two. Or all of them. <laughs> all of the companies. <laughs> the list. Mm-hmm. So, we're recording this on a Thursday. Thursday, October 18th, Huelhauser's birthday. And... You know it's Joe's birthday, right? Today? No. Anyway, that's a side note. We'll talk about it after. He's not uh, as aged as Huel, but... (laughs) No. No. And he doesn't have a shrine like we do here. No. I forgot to light the candles. (laughs) On the the birthday... (laughs) Whoops. Was that Huel? I think so. Was summoning him? Yeah. <laughs> nah, it's just my phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he would have been 73 years old today. And I just think about how the Huel that we're seeing now in his 40s, so vibrant and full of life, I think if he hadn't have gotten sick, he would have just kind of stayed that way forever. What do you think? Yeah, I think so too. That's fair. I mean, he's. I don't think he slowed down as far as his pace, according to like the Golden State of Mind documentary, stuff like that. It seemed like he was just work all the time. And thankfully he did up until right, like right up until the end, which we started this show on his death date, which is kind of morbid now that I think about how he did it. It was just what was coming up next. <laughs> But anyway, we should, should we still just a tribute? And, yeah. Uh, anyway, should we just jump right into it? Let's do it. Okay. Uh, well, first I want to talk about the the theme. Bare bones, super basic, but it's totally insane if you're watching it. If you're just listening to it, it probably doesn't sound like anything more than just another one of the banjo themes. But what you'll learn from the clip that we're about to play is that he was in uh in a moving conveyance of sorts. He was in the back of a truck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is so dangerous. I mean they're in the back of a rickety old what like 1944 Studebaker truck sitting on a bale of hay going down the highway. Highway 50. Yeah. And what uh, jamming. Yeah, what like <laughs> I, I get it looks cool and I'm glad that he did it, but dang. It's super sketchy. For sure. Do you think it would have been cooler if the guy was driving in the truck and backing up? <laughs> they were coming forward. I just wonder what was Louie in? Because it, it, it the the way that it's looking, there isn't much uh as far as a windshield kind of like reflecting light. During this open, it looks like Louie's out in the open air too, but like, are they towing something? Is he on a no, trailer? Maybe he's sitting on the hood of a car. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at the the relative lack of safety that's going on in this whole open, I wouldn't be surprised. My thing is this. It's funny that you noticed, the first thing you noticed was, man, this is pretty dangerous. Uh-huh. Well, not dangerous, but it's relatively dangerous as opposed to sitting inside of the car. Yeah. I was wondering how this guy's not getting sick. The are you the, the kind of person player? that gets sick? Yeah, when you're driving the wrong way. Yeah, yeah, like uh, taking the train to San Francisco. A lot of times it's crowded when you because this is like Bakersfield's the start of the train up to San Francisco, and you have to sit backwards sometimes. I hate it. Yeah, totally, totally barfed as a kid. Really, just going to Fresno, <laughs> going the wrong way. Well, Alan Hendricks, who plays this theme... No relation, by the way. Yeah. Well, it's an E-N instead of an A-N, so... (laughs) What if everyone with the same first name was related? (laughs) 
Oh man, that'd be weird. Yeah. Um, it's a good theme, but I really hope that you watch the video. The videos are always in the description of these shows too. So if you haven't noticed that yet, you can just click the video at any point that you're listening to us babble on about it. If you want to just see it, just go down the description It's right there, hit it, and then just come back and listen to us inanely talk about the same thing again. Anyway, let's hear Huel inanely talk about the, uh, the reason he's up in in Placerville hanging out in a Studebaker. Huel, happy birthday. Hit it. Our first stop was Placerville, a nice little gold rush town right in the heart of gold country. We were in search of a product that got its start here back in the 50s. Presenting the new 1954 Studebaker's. The cars with more for 54. You'll glow with pride when you wheel along in your distinctive 1954 Studebaker Commander V8. Wait a minute. I'm not talking about the 1950s. I'm talking about the 1850s. And I'm not looking for a Studebaker automobile. I'm looking for something Studebaker manufactured long before the automobile had even been invented. And to locate this product, I headed over to the El Dorado County Fairgrounds in Placerville, specifically to the El Dorado County Historical Museum, which is located in a big building on the fairgrounds. And after a quick tour of the place by Beverly Herzog, one of the docents, we got to the Studebaker exhibit I was looking for. Okay, so he kind of threw us for a curveball, making it sound like we were just going to be checking out Studebaker cars and trucks. Oh, this Huel. Just because it's your birthday, you can just get away with things? Bait and switch. Yeah. Well, we're at the Studebaker. Well, it's really the museum inside the El Dorado Fair, Mm -hmm. which oddly looked a lot like the Kern County Fairgrounds when you enter. Very much so. It, It was weird. Anyway... There's a museum on the fairground campus. I guess the fairgrounds. Yeah. <laughs> You've been going to college too I long. I know, way too calling long. Calling it a campus. Seven years at community college. <laughs> anyway. So, Same. So, <laughs> so we get, there's a relative, I mean, it's a small exhibit, mm-hmm. wouldn't you say? As far as what we can see, I don't know how big it may be, because they kind of just walk in and go straight to the... Uh, the main the main exhibit which looking at it you wouldn't think it is so it kind of just it, this looks like the same stuff that's sitting in the the Kern Valley Museum up near us in Kernville yeah a lot of the same kind of miners stuff but thankfully we have old Beverly Herzog here in her period clothes which let me give an update on Bev okay <laughs> before we move on hit it she's not with us anymore Ugh. I hate I'm it sorry, when you do dude, this. I, it's, it's bad news bears. Okay. Yeah. So he, uh, oh, so she, sorry, sorry, mm. Bev, died uh, August 10th, 2012. Okay. Actually, and if this is correct, she, from complications of falling out of a wheelchair when she was trying to do home chores at her yeah, older yeah. age. So there you go. All right. Well, Thankfully, we got Beverly here with us now. Well, she's she's with us now. Yeah, she uh, she's in her prime here. And uh, the, the Placerville Museum, I guess they didn't really say what it's actually called. Museum at El Dorado County Fairgrounds is yeah. what I wrote down. And she gets to show Huel, as we said, the kind of like piece de resistance. Wow, <laughs> Huel says that a lot in later <laughs> episodes. I liked it. It's a wheelbarrow. A rickety old, like rotting wheelbarrow. So, if you were Huel, what would you do if you saw this old wheelbarrow from the eighteen late eighteen hundreds, or I guess mid eighteen hundreds ish? What, what would, you would do? I do like if it was still me, just in Huel's body? If you were Huel Hauser, what would be your first inclination when you see it? Well, just just like steer clear, I guess. Come on. Of course not. It's to ask permission to touch, get that permission, and then straight up just pick it up. (laughs) And wheel it back and forth. This thing is creaking and cracking and barely hanging on. And, like, 
what's her name? Beverly is seems okay with it, sorta. But well, right, he says, "Can isn't that what he said? Can I touch it? Can I touch it? Yes." And he picks it up straight up, <laughs> like puts it through its paces on this like two foot high exhibit full of gravel. So it's all, oh man, and I and I guarantee because we get to see uh, Dennis O. Witcher, mm-hmm. he wanted the middle initial in there. Yes. I'm guessing that as the director of the museum, he didn't really know that he was moving this bit thing back and forth. Because well, he said, this is our most prized possession. Yeah, the greatest treasure, too, he said. Because <laughs> it's like, it cuts from Huel being like, oh, this is, a, this is a piece of history. I better put this down. Jump cut right to Den- yeah, Dennis saying, greatest treasure, best thing ever. Right, <laughs> right after Huel was manhandling it. Oh, man. Uh. It- it is a rickety old weir- wheelbarrow. I never in a million years would think to touch it. No, I wouldn't. For two two reasons. One, you ain't supposed to. And two, splinters all up in the hands. <laughs> like this thing looks like it is just a bunch of splinters barely pressed together. It was not it's even like once sawdust. wood. Yeah, <laughs> basically. Oh, man. Uh, well, Huel's going to... Uh, Sort of change gears, still we're wheelbarrow centric, but we're heading to another place. So he will tell us what you got up your, your sleeve. Get set. Right. It takes place every year at the El Dorado County Fair. They call it the John M. Studebaker World Championship Wheelbarrow Race, and it's a doozy. Sponsored by the Kiwanis Club of Placerville. It's held in honor of Mr. Studebaker and his famous Gold Rush era wheelbarrows. Now the race takes contestants in several categories around a course that involves all kinds of obstacles. So that was a doozy. Right. (laughs) (laughs) We're at the wheelbarrow races. I, for some reason, can't say the word wheelbarrow without my tongue just flopping around. Wheelbarrow. It it, it always wants to come. Yeah, it always wants to come out as barrel, yeah. and I have to force. Well, I was trying to make a joke in the transition. I said, oh, let's barrel on through. And it was wrong. That's dumb, because yeah, it's, it's not what it's supposed to be. Barrel I'm, on through. I'm going to tell San Jose State they're going to rip your master's degree from you. <laughs> oh, man. Um, yeah, wheelbarrow races. The John M. Studebaker World Championship wheelbarrow races. Which, Which is still going on. Did you check this out? I didn't. I wanted to talk about it starting in 1939 because that's, what, almost 100 years, like 80-something years ago? Yeah. And it's still going strong? Still, well, there were tickets for sale for this year's. When did it happen? Uh, I don't remember exactly. I think it was in the spring. I just clicked through, you know, just to see what was right. going on. That's all I can ask. A few yeah. clicks. It's like Eventbrite. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. So they, it was like legit tickets? Yeah, l- tickets. That's weird because I was assuming that this was taking place at the fair, like during fair time. Maybe not because I mean fairs happen kind of in the fall time, right? I don't, I don't know. Now Ple- See, Pleasanton, the Alameda County Fair was in the summer, if I remember right. Hmm. I guess we need to take time to watch the California's Golden Fairs series. Let's do it. Let's just stop right now. Just kidding. Um, I do want to watch those, though, because I've only been... No, I was about to lie a big old fatty fib and say that I've only been to the Kern County Fair. It's not true. I went to the OC Fair. I've been to the OC Fair, too. Which I only went... It's not the OC. This is people from Orange County are going to kill us. Is that a thing? The OC is a show. Well, I know it is. I didn't know it was a... Don't say the. I think I remember on Reddit people were real. Sensitive I'll take your word for it. it. I don't like. We'll okay. just call the. Well, no, See, it's hard yeah, to. It's... I went to OC Fair. <laughs> you know what, people that are from Orange County, let us know. Yeah, in fact, if anyone from Chapman down in Orange County wants to talk to us and tell us, for one, what or how to pronounce that, if it's a the or a just a know the also get us some VIP passes to the, uh, to the archives 
because there's a couple shows that aren't digitized that we're going to need to get to sooner, sooner or later. You need VIP tickets for that? I think, no, I think you just I need an appointment. But <laughs> get us in. You think with all the work we do to uh, keep Huel's spirit uh, spiraling through, we would be VIPs, but... Not at all. I I would just be watching Frasier if I wasn't doing this right now. Yeah. So it's not like... I mean, I think I consider us super fans, but what are you going to say? What are you going to do? Either way, know. you got, I, I know that one thing is true. Super fans of wheelbarrows exist. I didn't think that would ever be a statement I would say. But based on the segment here with the wheelbarrow championship race there's like a lot of people in the stands yeah and i went to placerville just this summer and there's not a lot of people in that city i mean it's not tiny but i think more people went to this than went to see uh john michael montgomery at the (laughs) (laughs) county (laughs) fair i swear uh anyway so who are we, who are we talking to? Who's uh Well first the first uh barrel freak we got? Yeah. Uh Steve Paulini, who's part of the Kiwanis Club, which do you know what a Kiwanis is? So I don't, but I know what a Kiwanis Club is and does. Okay. Because I won an award in fifth grade. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Have you seen this? No. It's called well, the, I don't know, maybe. The Hope of America Award. <laughs> Are you serious with that? I'm dead serious. What I is had it next okay, to my, wait. my small Lamborghini thing I won from... Uh, On the uh, desk in your parents' room? No, parents it was house? in my room, and it, there's a Lamborghini picture. Little, tiny, probably four I by... I meant s- like your room in your parents' house that I've been in. Yes. That yeah, yeah, taller sorry. desk? Yes, yes. Okay, then I probably did see it. And uh, yeah, I won that at Chuck E. Cheese, the Lamborghini. And I had it right next to each other, but it was covering a hole in the wall. Anyway, <laughs> small hole. But yeah, I had holes in my walls too. Hope of America. What does that mean? How did you win it? What do the Kiwanis? What does the Kiwanis Club do? Okay, I can answer two of those questions. Okay, did you ask when? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was trying to formulate my answer. I won it in fifth grade. Yeah. Just there was an assembly, and they chose me for whatever reason. Maybe because I. Read the most books? I don't know. I don't remember. And I don't know what a Kiwanis Club is or does. I'm sure it's a fraternal organization, and they do great things, but I don't I think know. It, all this talk, it deserves being looked up. So just hang on hang on a quick second. This is amazing. 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 All right. There's a lot here. First off, Kiwanis Clubs, they, yeah, you said it a second ago. They're just like a fraternal order of sorts do good kind of uh charity workers of sorts wouldn't you say Mm -hmm. but what caught me was the etymology of the name kiwanis which is coined from an ojibwe language word that's pronounced something like giwanizi meaning to fool around (laughs) and (laughs) that makes a lot of sense as far as like why they would pick you to win that Hope of America award. But then <laughs> when you read the description of what supposedly you were representing. Let's hear it. Okay. So the Hope of America award rec- recognizes and encourages students who have demonstrated academic accomplishments, leadership, and good character. All right. Off to a good start. These students are potential leaders who have sustained the democratic way of life. Okay, and exhibited <laughs> outstanding citizenship traits. Criteria for selection of a recipient include capacity for leadership, check, ethical and moral moral character, check, and academic competency. That's not, not excellency, <laughs> just competency. That, yeah, that's not me. <laughs> so I guess all I'd have to say is think of how bad my peers were. <laughs> <laughs> for them to choose me it also looks like an award that they as the Kiwanis Club kind of allow schools and organizations to give out 
kind of at their own discretion because there's it, it seems to be something that's touted by the Kiwanis as something to kind of build character and stuff. Plus, they sell you plaques. Is this? I got a plaque. You, okay, it yep. costs uh, your school forty bucks. Uh, without it, thinking of inflation, but infl- yeah. Currently, it would if you want. It, I could just buy one. I'm going to. I'm going to get myself one. I appreciate you watering this down for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what we could do. We could give one to Huel. I like that posthumous. Yep. Hope of America Award. Okay. As a birthday gift, we might have to do this. I don't know. Maybe not. We'll figure it out after this. <laughs> Let's see how much they uh, how much they do for the wheelbarrow race here. Hey, I said it. Because um, we got Steve Paulini and Larry Queso of the Kiwanis. And it's funny because Steve kind of just like, oh, it's a, it's a pretty good race and all. It's pretty tough. It's a man killer. <laughs> Which sounded so funny to say, but like, because they're showing clips of it and all, but man, killer, dude. Th- when they contrast the, the the way they used to mm-hmm. compete in these, did you notice some of the things they showed? You mean like the old clips? Yeah, yeah. They were running over rocks instead of sand. Yeah, I don't know. Looks super it, sketchy. It yeah, it totally does look hard. It is a man killer. I wonder if anyone has, has actually died. Yeah. I hope not. Because it's just... I mean, after Steve and Larry, we end up with old Chet Karsten, who won it the first eight years in a row. And this man has the biggest forearms yeah. I have ever seen. I, I must have been like writing my notes down when that has happened, because you texted me early today, like, am I freaking out about these arms? <laughs> and the picture, I think it is a perspective issue, but like... Oh, this tree trunk of a forearm. I, I have a perfect screenshot. Yeah, it, it'll nope. be up on Instagram. But Chet, as I said, won the first eight years in a row. And, and wh- he said he really needed the money because he had a family. God, his arms are big. <laughs> it just popped up on the video. Uh, <laughs> Dude, his big old bear mitt hands yeah, that's, help that's, too. That's, yeah. And it's funny because Huel is far from lacking in the arm and hand girth uh, category of life. And when you first see Chet and Huel, they're holding up this big, like, bronze-colored cup that is the same cup that they give the winner every year, I guess, because it had all the little etchings of Chet. And these fools will not give up like neither of them will give up holding on to that thing do you think if they both pulled pulled as hard as they could (laughs) they rip it in half (laughs) looking at chet's uh meat hooks that he's got absolutely plus both of them huel and chet both have watches on their left hands that are like bulging to the maximum tensile strength of the leather (laughs) it's just the last (laughs) clip or (laughs) the last little hole (laughs) oh man and it's like a four minute segment with with old chet holding this cup absolutely no sign of having a tired arm oh man it's good that is good stuff but then huel wants to do a quick uh interview with people who are running the race today well that day and we we hear from old Davy Weiser, self-proclaimed old guy. Yes. Do you think his middle name is Bud? <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's got to have a nickname of Bud, right? I would think so. What about Davy B Weiser? <laughs> yeah. Either way, he, uh, as you said, is running to stay young. Okay. He I mean, he doesn't look that old to me. And the guys behind him don't look that much younger than him, but yeah, I agree. Well, with you. I, I can't judge a book by its cover, I guess. Um, but yeah, he started years ago, and he says uh, been going ever since. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Then 
switch over to old Jeff Snyder. I think there's more to Jeff Snyder, though, than we get here. In what way? Did you notice this, the back of his shirt? I did, but I couldn't catch what it said. Snyder Ranch. Like, he's sponsored by his parents' ranch? Well, as he says in this quick interview, like, literally 10 seconds before the race starts, he's from Placerville, but he moved to OC, the OC. Let's just call it Orange County. Okay, he moved to Orange County. But he comes back every year. And, (laughs) yeah, like I said, it was 10 seconds before the race, and then, bam, gun hits. Wham bam slam slam a jamma, here we go. Race is on. What well, not? We got to back up a little bit. What did I miss? Did you notice what happened when the race? That when little, they shoot, the that guy flinches. Flinch, he clinches. He clinches because his whole upper body doesn't move. <laughs> yeah, he it's did. worth a watch. Hold on, second watch. Let's... I thought it was funny. I looked up it just totally just as it, it happened. Yeah, we'll see right here. Because, yeah, it's like like in a TV show with like a starter pistol. Bam. Scoop. <laughs> <laughs> he sure does. And that's Larry from earlier. Yeah, that's uh, at 1305 if you're interested. Yeah, old Larry Queso. And then I can't uh, tell. Is that Jeff who wins? No. Cause did they say his name? No, they didn't say his name, but I, I don't think that's Jeff. Yeah, yeah, because if you look before... Um, when he's jumping in the water, uh, that's the last little bit of the race is them jumping in the water with a wheelbarrow. He doesn't have that Snyder on the back of his shirt. Right, right. But before, I mean, I don't want to keep jumping back here, but first of all, I thought that was Hugh Hauser running right there. Oh, with the blue, <laughs> with the blue shirt, and the white pants. What if he just jumped in the race? <laughs> That'd be awesome. No, there's a guy, um, what time are we at here? Yeah. 1328. Look at this guy in the mullet. Oh, with like the the leotard pants and the mullet. <laughs> and did you notice how he went over it? He just, he just went head first. Just slides Dude, he over just... this forty two inch log. <laughs> oh man, this is a killer race. I want to go to this. I wish I had known this was going on in Placerville. I, otherwise, I would have gone. Either That's way, awesome, dude. Homeboy wins, not Jeff. And it's what his second time winning. He said. Yeah, but then Chet makes him feel like that's not enough. Yeah. Third time, right? Yeah. No, oh, no, only second. I've been like second, third, fifth a lot. Oh, and Huel's like, oh, well, this is the guy who won the first eight. He's like, yeah, yeah, I know. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor, poor guy. I don't. I wish we knew his name. Wait, let's look up and see if there is actually a list of winners. This, is a, this is a gamble. Hold this on. This is amazing. amazing. Oh well, we tried. There's lots of information about this thing, even old newspaper uh, I'm scans sure and all this. A little more digging, we could we could oh, find well. it. But either way, Huel gave us a treat in that he made his transition clip truly a transmi- tr- transmission clip. I was going to say, love it, <laughs> where he talked about the segment prior and the segment to come. We're going to let Huel wrap this one up and bring us into the next one. Here it is. Huel hit it. The last Studebaker automobile was produced on March 17, 1966. But the Studebaker name is still very much alive right here in California, in El Dorado County, where the local citizens are rightfully very proud of the fact that it all started right here back in 1853 with a simple wheelbarrow which sold for $8 and was manufactured by Mr. John M. Studebaker. To help out the gold miners. To get to our next destination in search of a product produced in California back during the gold rush, we headed right over the Bay Bridge for San Francisco. Now we were heading for a manufacturing plant located on Valencia Street. It was a neat old building that's been in continuous operation since 1906. Welcome to Levi Strauss and Company which has been making jeans in San Francisco since 1873. Now, the first thing I did when I got there was to get a tour of the place by line manager Joe Casaletto. And the first thing I noticed during that tour was that the place had a wonderful old-timey feeling to it. Well, here we are, back in the Bay. Well, 
if you're looking at the map, we're still a uh, hundred miles off the coast again. <laughs> Twenty five clicks and <laughs> what the heck? The west. I know yeah. they're just reusing the map from the last time we we're in the bay, but the star is so far off the land it's just in the Pacific Ocean. I think it's international waters at that point. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> Either way, we are at the Levi Strauss and Company factory. Factory. Yeah. Yeah. The. Weird part about this, though, mm-hmm. is you heard in the the narrative. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, I thought that was funny. That's stupid. <laughs> um, we get to hear about Joe Casaletto, mm-hmm. who's the line manager, who apparently gave Huel a entire tour of the place. And there's just lost foot. Is he ter- was he terrible at his job? He or? must have been because we instantly jump right to Susie. Susie, I like Susie. Yeah. <laughs> Susie Salsa? <laughs> Susie Sala, not Susie Sa Salsa. Gosh. What is wrong? We're messed up today. Oh yeah, yeah. We're all uh we're all hopped up on birthday cake for Huel, I guess. The recipient of the Model American War, was that thing called? The Hope of America. Hope of America. Okay. <laughs> oh man. Uh but Susie is just hanging out making pants. So is Celeste Robles, Robles. Uh, but she never stops working. No, and she gets paid by the piece. Exactly. She's a, a works per unit. Huel's distracting her, pretty much making her lose money. And, you know, it's probably expensive to live up in San Francisco then, just like it is now. Don't distract this lady mm-hmm. while she's riveting. Now, maybe she had a nice, beautiful, wonderfully maintained rent control department. I don't think there's much rent control in San Francisco anymore, but I'm not sure. Oh, come on. Either way, we're jumping to the star of the segment, Lynn Downey, who is the historian or an historian for numerous things, but for the Levi Strauss company at this point. Did you look her up at all? Uh, Yes, I did. So did I. Let's see if we got the same note. Okay. She was at the company for 25 years mm-hmm. as the, um, the the company historian, and she retired in 2014. That's all I got. Okay. Well, if you were to go to lynndowney.com. Oh, wow. I didn't I know did. shit. <laughs> she had a website. <laughs> you would know that she has written the uh, definitive biography on Levi Strauss called Levi Strauss, Man Who Gave, Us Blue Je- Man Who Gave Blue Jeans to the World. Man, she what an interesting career, right? And she wrote multiple books on Levi's, specifically, also on the history of Sonoma, which she's a, a fourth generation Sonoman. Okay, and on California tile and Arequipa pottery, which is part of the arts and crafts movement of okay. the past century. She was prolific, and then some. Because she's still listed as a historian, archivist, all this stuff. She's uh, she's on it. She's killing it. Yeah. Either way, the she may be the star of the segment as far as a guest. Well, she's a pro. Totally. But I think the real star of the segment are those 100-year-old Levi's that Huel just picks up and flings around. Just like he did the wheelbarrow. Okay, so he does ask, can I pick these up? Do you notice that he'll ask that in the middle of the action of doing it? Yeah. He'd already picked them up, so. He even says these should be like in a display, like behind glass. Yeah, from people like you. (laughs) Most people wouldn't think to pick them up. I mean, these are old jeans that were found in a silver mine in Nevada. And they are all torn up. But they're still in pretty good condition. Either way, it's a pretty bare bones, not bare bones, but a basic, simple kind of She does museum tour. Debunk one myth, though, that Huel held. Oh, the... Uh, Tent pants. Yeah. <laughs> I hadn't heard that before, Me but... Me neither, yeah. But she shot that down in a nice way. Yeah. But... And then we... Uh, did you see that... It was a carving of the cowboy sitting in the trough, or <laughs> do people... Have you, I've never heard of that. 
I definitely have. It, it's not something that you would do with your everyday Levi's now because most of them are not. Right, but I'm thinking about the raw denim freaks. That's exactly who does that. Oh, now. they do that? Yeah. Okay. I don't know if everyone does. I'm not into that, but I have heard of, like, I know a dude who is into that and has done it. So. And it works? Yeah, I guess. Okay. Well, there you go. I don't know why you would need them to be so form-fitting like that. Like, are you trying I don't to, know. Like, People are into, like, Birkenstocks fitting around their feet and whatnot. But that does happen, though, right? They <clears throat> Yeah, they do. They adjust to the, the cork, gives way to the... It's arches like, of your feet so it's like a custom sandal yeah i guess totally destroys the resale value <laughs> <laughs> but there is like i wish there was more to this and it is cool and i would want to go to this museum but i feel like there was more there and old joe just he boofed it somehow? He, i think he boofed it because i mean we were almost at, what, 18 minutes mm-hmm of the real, like, effective 25 minutes of the show. Yeah. So they only spent seven minutes at the Levi Strauss Museum, so. Either but we did, we did I, learn some new lingo, though. Like what? Waste overalls. Waste, yeah, I never had heard that. And this is 1994. Huel's in his 40s. But, bro, those super relaxed fit jeans that he's got on. Mm-hmm. I don't think those are ever really that cool, right? I mean, I don't wear my pants super skin tight by any means, but... Yeah, that was... Yeah, you're right. No, I mean, if they were cool. like super baggy, like like head from corn kind of baggy <laughs> pants. <laughs> but no, this is like... Uh, let me see. Yeah. It's like yeah. what my uncle would have worn. Uh, and still and Just does. like wide-legged. Yeah. Not like, like, not like interstate pants, right? No, no, no. Just <laughs> extra room. Just that kind of blousey. And the seat? And in the the crotch. And the seat, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, because I, I I don't wear Levi's. Oh, yeah. We got because into they this don't fit me very week. well. I wear Stranglers, also known as Wranglers. And uh, so, I mean, I like this, but I wish I could wear Levi's. Have you worn all the different 500 numbers? So, yeah. Know? There's actually the only ones that fit me are the athletic fits. They're like... Oh, Mr. Athlete over uh, here. Not really. All-American <laughs> Kiwanis boy. I'm a sprinter. What can I say? <laughs> I have some on right now. The athletic, the well, fi- no, oh, just... five to five twenty five forty one or five twenty seven. I forget. I got. Oh no, mine. yeah, I know which ones. You're t- I've had a pair or two of those, but no, these are. Five, and you wear just uh, like a 11s. weird size, like a thirty one or something. <laughs> fits me. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> anyway, enough about me. Enough about all this because enough about us. Yeah, enough I about guess. This show. Ugh. <laughs> Thank you all for listening because our wives don't want to have to hear us talk about this kind of stuff so much it's an outlet what are you gonna say yeah and it seems like the the world of fuel is still alive and well because today on his birthday there have been so many tweets instagram posts facebook posts tons of stuff and it's not something like you know milestone birthday it's 73 i mean if it was like his 70th birthday 75th it makes sense but no every year people are still into it And we're still into it. We're still going to do this show. As long as there's listeners to listen to it, we'll do it forever. So you remaining three don't go anywhere. (laughs) (laughs) No, there's more than that. There's There's more of you fuel heads out there. Anyway, where are we going next week? We are going to be talking about wings, not the show. Or the food. Or the food. Oh my gosh, my sorry. My you foot. would you would love that if it was about hot wings. Love hot wings. Yeah. You wouldn't. Hey, I eat uh vegetarian hot wings. Soy boy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we're <laughs> speaking of wings. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're going to be looking at the pigeon courier service at Avalon. Yeah. Because um, there's some pigeon over on messengers. Catalina Island? Yeah. That's crazy. Like, that whole concept has always been so interesting to me. And Huel's going to hop in a plane at 29 Palms at the Air Academy. You mean a plane without an engine? That's right. Yep, he's gliding all over the dang old place. And 29 Palms seem to have a a nice little uh, piece of Huel's heart. We'll get into that next week. 
but join us that week and every week as we continue our search for you.